In this video, we're going to look at the what's known as a chi-squared test of independence, uh, which is used uh, for mathematical IB mathematical studies. It says here, Nathan has collected data about the types of TV programs that students in his year group particularly enjoy. He predicts that the preferences will be the same for boys and girls. So what he's saying is that the preferences, it doesn't matter whether you're a boy or a girl, the preferences are independent of each other. The results are placed in a two-way table. So here we have the male, soap opera, current affairs, comedy and movies. So 12, like, 12 males like soap opera, 5 like current affairs, 10 like comedy and 9 like movies. And, and for females, 4 like soap operas, 12 current affairs, 7 comedy and 5 movies. And what we're trying to say is that no matter what the gender is, these choices are independent. So we're going to do this bit by bit. This is called a chi-squared test, but it's been sp split up into different parts to make it a little bit easier to follow. State Nathan's null and alternate hypothesis for the chi-squared chi test. So let's do that to begin with. So the null hypothesis is called H0. It's called the choice of the favourite TV programme is independent of gender. And then the alternate hypothesis is that the choice of favourite TV programme is dependent, or depends, on gender. Right, the next part is that we need to make a table of expected frequencies, and we're going to look at this idea of uh, degrees of freedom that there are for, the, for this test. Now, these values here are called the observed values, because these were collected, but there are some, what's known as an expected set of data as well. So... If we take the observed frequencies and add a column, totals, and work out the, the total of each row, that's 36, that's 28, and then each column, that's 16, 17, 17, and 14, these totals here and these totals here should add up. This is known as some, sometimes known as a two-way table or contingency table. And then we have the expected frequencies. Now the expected frequencies, we have the same sort of table, all right, but we now take these totals and put them here and here as well. And what we do to calculate this one here, okay, we take the row total times the column total, so the row total times the column total and divide it by the grand total, which is 64. So in the first case, we're going to do 36 by 16 divided by 64, and that gives me that number that goes in there, which is 9. Then the next one will be 36 times 17 divided by 64, and that gives me 9.5625. And the next one will be 36 times 17 divided by 64 and that gives, again gives me 9.5625 now we don't need to actually go any further than that because sorry we've got to write it in we don't need to actually go any further than that because these now are all restricted by the fact they have to add this one here when we add it in must add up to 36 this one here must add up to 16, this one here must add up to 17, this one here must add up to 17. Once we put this one here, it must add up to 14 this way and 28 this way. So, we get the idea of the uh, degrees of freedom. All right, so once I've placed three values into the table, the other values are all fixed. So therefore, the degrees of freedom we need this to carry out the test. Note this is equal to 3. I want to place 3 in here. These are all fixed. Right, so degrees of freedom can actually be calculated from any table. If you know the number of rows and take 1, so that will be not 2 rows, take 1, which is 1. And the number of columns, which is 4, take 1, which is, in this case, 3. Okay, we're going to have... Uh, 1 times 3, which is equal to 3. That can give you the degrees of freedom. All right, so we've got some uh, concepts here. To calculate the expected frequencies, you take the total, multiply it by this total, and divide by the, the grand total. 
All right. Once once you've calculated a few, some will be restricted, so you can just do it uh, by this one. So this one here has to be seven. All right. It's easy to see. This one here has to be seven point eight seven five. This one has to be seven point four three seven five. This one has to be seven point four three seven five. And this one has to be 6.125, and that makes the table then add up. So we've answered these two questions here. Now, the, this table can actually be produced using the GDC, and I'll show you later how to do this in the video. And using the GDC is the expected method in the Mass Studies exam, and also the, uh, the calculator will give you this value straight away. All you will need to do is input these values in, in what's known as a matrix. We'll look at that in a minute. Okay, perform the chi-squared test using GDC to find the chi-squared statistic and the p-value. Let's see what we mean by that. So we have our observed frequencies and our expected frequencies that we just calculated. We don't no longer need the totals. The chi-squared test, which is written like this, is you take an observed frequency, you subtract the expected frequency, you square it, because some of them are positive and some of them are negative, and you divide by the uh, expected frequency. And what you do is you add those up for each one. So the first one will be 12, take away 9, all squared, divided by 9. All right, and then the others will follow. 5, take away 9.5625, divided by 9 point squared, divided by 9.5 to 6.25, and that then follows for all the rest. Okay, again, you will not be required to do this because the calculator will do it for us. All right, all you need to do is pair up the, uh, ex the observed frequency cell with the expected frequency cell. These are then all added together. This is what this symbol means, add together, sigma. and we get a value of 7.67. Now, our calculator will give this value, as I'm about to do now on the GDC. So, to do this on the GDC, and I'll remind you, this you would not have to write down in an exam. Go to the GDC and go to a calculation mode. Go to uh, Menu, and the first thing you have to do with this is go to number 7, Matrix. Select number, set number 1, Create, and then we're going to create a matrix. We wanted two rows and four columns, so you, you have to set that up to begin with. And then you just put in the values. 12, 5, 10, 9, 4, 12, 7, 5. Right, then you have to actually give the matrix a name. So you press Control and the one above variable, which is store, and you give it a name. So you select a letter A. You press Enter, so that, that now records that matrix as A. Right, now you're going to perform the test. That's the first bit. Next bit, you now perform the test. So you go to Menu, number 6, Statistics, and there's one down here called Stat Test. And there are lots and lots and lots of these on, in this menu. The only one you're ever going to need is this one here, chi-squared, sorry, number eight, chi-squared two-way test. But there are two chi-squared tests. You only need number eight when you're doing this. So go to number eight, select it, okay, and we need to do, ask the calculator to uh, find the observed matrix. If you press the arrow here, you'll see the, the A that I defined it as, and we press OK, and we've now done the test. That's it. Okay, we've actually done the uh, test, so let's do some screenshots of those steps. Okay, so how to get to that, how to get to that, how to find the matrix, performing the test, and then we've got to that, that part. Okay, so if we just go back to our calculator, we can actually get what's known as the expected matrix. Okay, and the comp matrix, which I'll explain what it is. Expected matrix is the expected frequencies table. So we can actually get the calculator to produce that for us. 
So, to do that, once we perform the test, you have to have performed the test to begin with. Press the one here, it says variable. Okay, and you'll see here, stat, exp, matrix. Enter, and then press enter, and you might recognize those values as the expected frequencies. Okay, and then we'll also write down the comp matrix, and I'll explain what that is in a minute. So go to variable, and you'll see this one here, stat comp matrix, and we'll enter that, press enter, and we'll explain what that is in a minute. But this one you will already recognize. Alright, so there's a the stat matrix. Okay, right, so what this one does, the um, expected frequencies, it just gives me the expected frequencies that I've already calculated. Alright, but this is perhaps how you would do it. You take the information from your calculator and put it in here for yourselves. Okay, the COM matrix, what does that do, do me? Well, if you remember previously, we did we calculated the value of chi-squared cal and we got, uh, we did uh, 12 minus 9 all squared divided by 9, which gives me that value there. And that gives me all the numerical values of those, okay, and they add up this value here and this is all you actually need to be able to do is be able to write down this value you don't even need to write this on your exam script but if you're doing a project maybe you would need to write this so you write chi squared and then you write that down correct to three centimeter figures 7.67 right the p value and we're going to explain what these things mean in a minute is the one underneath which is this is the method perhaps you're going to use to do the conclusion of the test. It says 0 0.0532. Okay, you have to interpret that as 5.32%. That's the decimal value of it. That's what it means. Right, what are we doing? Okay, so if chi squared 5% is 7.815, now this value used to be in a table, and I'll show you how to get it in a calculator in a minute, but I don't think you'll be expected to do that in an exam. State Nathan's conclusion, and then state Nathan's conclusion using the p-value. So there are two ways of doing the conclusion. So chi-squared cal will be 7.67, which we just calculated. Now the graph of chi-squared is a bit funny. It looks like this. Okay, so you just need to draw that. And V stands for the degrees of freedom, so it's free. Um, now, when you do a test, you normally check in the top 5%. So what you want is the top, the end bit to be 5%. This is 5%. This is 0.95%, and this is 7.815, the value that we put here. Now, where does my value go? Does it go this side of that or this side of that? Well, it goes this. We can very easily see it goes this side of that because it's less than uh, 7.8. Okay, so if, if it's in this bit here, we do not reject H0. Okay, we accept H0. If it's over here we will reject H0, and this depends on the value that we get from the calculator. So the conclusion using this method, as chi-squared calc is 7.67, is less than the critical value, 7.815, we do not reject H0 and say that the choice of the TV program is independent of gender. So gender does not have bet, no, has no uh, influence on, on our choice. Right, if we're using the p-value method, then this is the method perhaps you're going to use in the exam. The p-value method is equal to 0 0.532. Then the conclusion this time, as 0 0.532 is bigger than 0 0.05, so that's what bigger than 5%, okay, the p-value for 5%, we do not reject H0 and say that the choice of the program is independent of gender. The same conclusion just made a different way. So what we're saying is the air, the area at the end is all of this, okay, and because it's bigger than the area for 5%, then we know that our value is over here. This is how this works. If the p-value is less than 0.05%, that means the area is over here, Okay, we would reject H0 and then we'll say, have to accept the alternate hypothesis that that it was, the choice was dependent on gender. 
Okay, so that's how the conclusions work. Now, this is the one that you will use in an exam, rather than this one. Okay, so I hope you sort of really understand that. And there's just one last thing. Now, it is possible to use the GDC to calculate this value. Okay, so just going to just do that briefly. So calculating the critical value using the GDC. All right, so I'm going to show you how to get that value using the GDC, but you probably would not have to do this in an exam. So we could go to this, okay, and we go to menu, and we go to this time to probability, and we go to number five distributions, okay, and we want the inverse of chi squared, number nine here, the inverse of chi squared. All right, now, the inverse goes from zero up to a point. So uh, we want for 5%, so we have to put in 0 0.95, and we knew the degrees of freedom are three. So you do know, need to know the degrees of freedom, and press OK, and we will get that value that we just, uh, just talked about, 7.8145. Okay, so the screenshots for that are here. And there's just one more thing I wanted to show you as well, is from the test, when we did the test further up here, of course, it does actually also give you the degrees of freedom of the test. Okay, so this has been a video to show you how to use the GDC for the chi-squared test. There's a lot more working out here than you actually need. Okay, but this gives you a, an idea of what you have to do for the chi-squared test. I hope you've understood. And I thank you very much for watching.